James Com, the guy on the bike, and we are back to do what we do. Get some Saturday afternoon acculturation in. And we're gonna run in here to the Vito Schnabel Gallery on Clarkson Street and take a look at an exhibition by one of our old friends, Bill Jensen, wandering boundless and free. Stay tuned. Start here and then make our cursory sweep of the installation. This is a diptych titled Transgressions Transgressed 2019-2020 Each panel was 39 by 63 Okay, so they're saying this is a show made up of works that has been produced over the last 14 years And I was thinking I uh, I think I've seen a couple of these. Maybe this shows up at Chime and Read. But I think this has got some of the uh, interesting elements that uh, Bill has started developing over the last seven, eight years. One of them is the uh, figurative elements. Not a bitter chant. Fifteen. This is twenty twenty two. This is forty by thirty two. Well, they talk about how um, Bill comes out of the the legacy of Albert Pinkham Ryder. Some of the other. Stranger, New York School painting, and then going into the abstract expressionists with people like Pollock de Kooning, Clifford Still. And I was actually looking at this and noticing that uh, there's a lot of uh, unique painting things going on in some of these. Anyway, I guess part of the the point of talking about his heritage leading back to Albert Pinkham Ryder. Maybe Henry Asawa Tanner 
is another interesting painter, is that uh, Bill has always been fascinated and been uh, working with the qualities of paint and glazes and oils and solvents. And I think one of the other things that he kind of relates to uh, writer in is that a lot of the works, at least they were, fairly intimate. Okay, this is titled Spinocchia Luciani, Alchemy 2017. This is 26 by 20. Well, this goes to what I was talking about, his alchemical, I was going to say fetishistic. Uh, that might not be the most um, appropriate term, but um, God, he loves to play with paint and he finds certain kinds of pigments and the chemicals in those pigments have a certain kind of reaction to the the oil, the underlying uh, surfaces that he's putting them on and uh, the kind of solvents he's using. It's titled Substance, Spirit and Shadow. Tao Ching, 4th century, version 2, this is 2010 to 2014. Oil on linen, three panels, 55 by 126. Well, uh, I was a young art student who had just arrived in New York. <laughs> it's like the start of a lot of my stories. Uh, and one of the most uh, influential and controversial shows that popped up in that first year or so was Barbara Rose's paintings of the 80s, maybe it was painters of the 80s. In any case, uh, I think she carried together about 42 painters and uh, put them out there as her and a vote for the people that were going to be the stars of the 1980s, and she did this in 1979, so a lot of people are just thinking, what does she think, she's got some kind of crystal ball? She can predict where the art world is gonna go? Anyway, Bill was one of the, the artists, and that was where I started remembering his name, kind of making note of it. Also, I think, uh, I was talking about his use of the intimate scale, but in this particular one, he's doing a triptych, but it's, it's not like a straight rectangular triptych. He's got kind of slotted areas where he's kind of misaligned the panels to kind of throw in this extra dissonant chord. I was gonna say also, uh, he does a lot of things where he's laying down a layer of paint and then he will uh, wash it away with solvent and kind of change the way its surface acts. This is titled Transgressions 2011 to 2014, oil and linen, three panels, 55 by 105. Okay, so we, uh, saw some of the figurative elements. I think a lot of people were kind of shocked when Bill, you know, their favorite kind of classical abstract expressionist paint slatherer started to uh, make paintings that had references to 
figures, and I think these are all based on maybe classical Renaissance or pre-Renaissance paintings. I don't know, maybe it's Michelangelo, some, some of these things. Also, uh, there's a kind of a uh, morphing into libidinal images. And I think it actually takes a lot of courage to kind of play the pretty uh, stark figuration against the more painterly, uh, abstract, expressionistic stuff. Also, uh, if you look closely, you can see that uh, I think Bill spends a lot of time sanding these surfaces down and kind of polishing them. wrap up looking at this piece. This is Passions According to Andre, Rubel and Tetrovsky, 2010 to 2011. This is 53 by 78. And again, we've got this pretty stark contrast. I was talking about his figurative pieces, but... Okay, so these are not like human figures. I think they actually are maybe bones. At least that's what they look like. Something that has been dug up by an archaeologist, maybe. And I always like the uh, scruffy, hand-worked kind of scraped, sanded, wiped surfaces, and especially around the edges. I remember that, um, well, Bill is one of the stalwarts of the Williamsburg art scene. His wife, Margaret Luchek, is also part of that, but um, there's probably a group of at least 20, 25 artists, painters, friends that have been out there for, well, many years at this point. And uh, Bill was one of the Doctor Emeritus of the of the school there, the I don't know if you could call it a Williamsburg school or not. Anyway, I remember he and Chris were talking about uh, dioxazine purple, which I believe that might be. Anyway, they were talking about how it had this strange characteristic that when you kind of scraped it on to a certain thickness and let it dry, there was a weird reflected light thing that would happen and it actually would change colors from something that was dark violet to almost a uh, you know, metallic green. And, uh, well, Bill used that in a lot of his paintings. Uh, one of the things they talk about in the press release is his ability to create canvases that have light and space. James Com reporting on Bill Jensen, wandering boundless and free here at Vito Schnabel.
What luck, we came in here last month and we got a Thomas Troche show. <laughs> so we're back at Fredericks and Frazier and we're gonna go in here and snag Maria Palandra and get her to tell us a little bit about her show. Stay tuned. Maria Calandra. Is that the right way? Okay, usually I, <laughs> I mispronounce people's names. Tell us about the show. Well, these are all uh, places that I've uh, visited and hiked through over the years. Some uh, all the way back to 10 years ago, my artist husband Eric Denbregen and I yes. spent a lot of time traveling and hiking. Um, so these are from all over the world yeah. or particular places where you spend more time than other places? Or? I'd say a lot of time in Northern California. Well, that's what you were saying. Okay, we'll start over here. This is the Redwoods. These Northern are the Redwoods? California, close to the town of Jenner, <laughs> which is uh, right by the... Named for Bruce Jenner or what's, uh, <laughs> whatever Bruce is identifying <laughs> as these days. Uh, They're all acrylic on... Um, a uh, unprimed linen. Ah. Let's keep going around the circle here. This is after closing time, so I have to uh, <laughs> thank the management here at the gallery. This is wonderful. This is on, um, Vermont in the summertime. Do any of these have titles? Uh, yes, this is Quiet Path. In Quiet Stowe, Path. Which is actually the name of a little tiny hike in the middle of Stowe, Vermont, where when we're there, we often go watch the sunset. So this is a sunset. I'm sort of a sunset and sunrise obsessed artist. So when we travel, we always wake up for sunrise and make sure we're outside for sunset. So a lot of time. And what size are those? I would say those are probably, what, five by? Yeah, 60 by 45. 60 by 45, okay, so 5 by 4. Yeah. This is a little bigger. This one's 72 by 4. And this is um, Maine, north, uh, uh, near Blue Hill, Stonington, Deer Isle, Blue Hill. And we were talking a little bit before because I know that uh, you had a project that you worked on, and you may still be working on it for several years. Yeah, about years. Drawing people's studios, and I know you came by my studio and yeah, made a sketch, and and then you have a blog that you put these on, and yeah, pencil in the studio. You're pencil awesome. in the studio. I, I did it for eleven years, almost hundred artists. Gosh. But I always painted landscape, and finally I, I let the paintings come forth and the drawings. Okay, I'm just going to look at this and let my mind kind of run. This looks like maybe the Grand Canyon, something down in the Canyonlands. And am I wrong? Or yeah, Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon, okay. North, um, uh, south, the south part of the Grand Canyon. Actually, uh, got a lot of beautiful brushwork in there, and uh, you're is, quite a colorist. Thank you. This is um, Mount St. Victoire, so this is Cezanne's mountain. Really? The you went the You went to the south of France and, yeah, Eric and I did went some to painting? The studio Good for you. Uh, looked at this mountain and it was springtime. There were beautiful poppies. But I, I really wanted to also paint his mountain. Think of how many times he painted it. I only painted it once so far. But. And this is not exactly what I would call cubism. This is <laughs> everything's gotten a little, yeah. a little curly and uh, yeah. swirly this here. Is swirlyism. Okay. <laughs> Just that must have been fun though, so you were actually able to go there, yeah. visit the studio, and then go out and look at the mountain and make yeah. your paintings. Yeah. Okay. And this is um, Oakland, looking over the San Francisco Bay, up in the Oakland Hills, California. Uh, also in the spring. We travel always in the spring, I'm always looking for the flowers. Well, if someone was to ask you, um, who do you look at? Who do you think you've been influenced by as far as your painting ideas and maybe technical things? Is there anybody that stands out? I mean, I'm, I, it's, inter it's interesting. Maybe I don't always think of landscape, but I'm a huge Miro fan. Miro. I'm obviously Jean a Miro. Van Gogh fan. Van Gogh? Van Gogh? Yeah, Van Gogh. Van Gogh. Um, at contemporary, I really love Mama Anderson. You probably have 
probably can't see it in the work, but I think I'm looking for work a lot. Who? What's your name? Mama Anderson. Molly Jen. Anderson. Mama Anderson. She's oh, Jen Mama. Zorner, artist. Okay. And this is made during the. We were there painting during the pandemic. We were offered a place to stay, so. You know, I was also thinking that some of this makes me think of Birchfield. Yeah, people because that. Yeah. yeah, in certain ways, uh, aside from the um, technical things, just the color and stuff like that, there is a kind of almost a a sense of some kind of like inner spirit that's yeah. within the nature, some kind of bristling, turning, swirling, natural thing. Okay, th this one definitely makes me think of Van Gogh and Starry yeah. Night. This is um, looking, looking over Como, uh, Lake Como. But this one in particular, I, it was after I saw the recent Van Gogh show at the Met, and I really liked uh, releasing all of the warmer colors and concentrating on the cooler colors. The cool so colors. I was thinking of him. And, the, and I feel very much like their drawings, like all the linear work, which is, I think, where people are relating to Birchfield. And it's where... Yes. I kind of let the vibration of nature come through. But I'm also looking at some of this and thinking that you do a lot of stuff with kind of like the pooling and yeah. the pouring and the staining. Yeah. And is that's why you want to work on the, the raw linen, yeah. right? And I, I okay. was flat for the first five hours. So in a certain way, you could also say that Helen Frankenthaler oh, and, uh, and yeah. Kenneth Nolan and yeah. Morris Lewis and all those guys, yeah. the stain painting people, are part of your, your legacy. Okay. And how she, you know, how she leaned into abstraction, and I feel really like most free when I'm doing that. And the landscape will always be there, but I really enjoy the abstract arts and my paintings, making them. So, just briefly, give me a little idea. You start out and you're staining, and then. Mm -hmm. And then you sort of go from there and you have like little things may catch your attention and you start to yeah. build your composition around that. But it's, I mean, I could be wrong, but it seems pretty spontaneous. It's and very, very spontaneous and I consider them improvisational because I also use music quite a bit to make the work. So depending on what I'm listening to, it might be more uh, vibratory and the movement is more extreme. Uh, what? I think often like how jazz musicians play off a of theme. Yes. When I'm working. Kind of uh, riffing on a particular yes. theme and yeah. going off in a different direction. Yeah. And I guess that you you can even actually stain over other areas, right? So you don't just start out with one thing and then build it up with brush strokes. You're kind of staining over something, yeah. brushing it a little bit here and there. And so do you work on these flat on the floor a lot flat or on a table? For the first four or five hours and then they're up for a month and a half. So. I was going to say, that sounds like babysitting my granddaughter. Yeah, <laughs> she's down hilarious. for five hours and then she's, she's up for the next 20 hours. <laughs> That's exactly it. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll start here and kind of work our way around. Okay, so we got some palm trees. Yeah, this is um, it Ischia. Itchy, Ichia, Ichia. Sorry, I'm having a hard time pronouncing it. An island off of Naples. These beautiful, um, there was a beautiful garden there that we spent some time in. So that would be the um, Mediterranean Sea in the background. And also, uh, looks like you've picked out an extremely fine linen. Very, very fine linen. I'm really thinking you wanted about to keep paper. it kind of slip. Oh, you want it to be paper because you. Yeah, you have a feel for the paper yeah. after all those years. And this is, for me, this is very much about drawing. I'm just using the tip of the brush and outlining it. Well, I think that's one of the great things about these is you've got, you were talking about the spontaneous staining. Yeah. And then maybe some bigger brush strokes and then going down into finer things and kind of articulating your forms at a smaller and smaller level. Yeah. But that adds to the... Uh, the wonderful contrast of forms, surfaces, brush strokes, all that stuff. Thank you. Now, are you still living out in Bushwick? No, uh, we are in Greenpoint. And oh, in Greenpoint. The studio is just a block and a half away, so it's really nice. I kind of live in the paintings if I'm working on a show, because my home is so close. 
What's the title of this piece? This piece is um, Quenching of California Poppies. Quenching of California Poppies. So this is uh, also Northern California, uh, near also near the Russian River, but this isn't the Russian River. The Russian River. That one is Stonington, Maine. You know, actually, I like the way that you kind of, uh, each one of these has got kind of a unique spectrum of colors in here and contrast. So, you know, this is a little bit different than the other ones that have more of the red tint, but this is going in a little different direction. Yeah. And you got some near black in there. Yeah, I never use black, but I mix as dark as I can. And this is... More I, palm I grew trees. Up, grew up in Florida, so the Florida paintings, like the one in the front of the... Um, gallery are very, I find them, I mean, I'm obsessed with these stormy palm trees. I grew up near St. Petersburg, Florida. This is Anna Marie Island. And it's sort of contrasts of the darkness of storms, but the beauty of them, too, because it's nature, and nature needs to do what it needs to do. Yeah, those uh, little dashes of purple in there in the shade are really uh, hot. They sizzle. Okay, Maria, we're going to wrap up looking at this. This also looks like the south of France. Am I wrong? Or maybe? No, this, well, it's not the south of France, but painter related because this is where, this is Ghost Ranch, where Giorgio Keith painted. Okay, Ghost Ranch. Yeah, I went to hike there and uh, with Fred and Lyme, and this is a tree that really spoke to me, and it's really a powerful place to be. So obviously, I was thinking of Giorgio Keith when I painted this. But also El Greco. Have you seen any of Marsden Hartley's paintings of I have, yeah. that area around there? Yeah. Taos and all that stuff. Maria Calandre. Thank you so much. This means so much to me. <laughs> it's so lovely. James Calm, please. Or James Calm. <laughs> Uh, well, thanks for taking the time and getting the uh, local administrators to let us <laughs> hang out here. Thank What's you. the title of the show? The show is called Chasing the Sun, which is Chasing after, the Sun. After my favorite singer-songwriter, Judy Still. Okay, so folks, you can like this, share, link it up to all your social media sites. You can subscribe, and you can leave your thoughts, ideas, comments, criticisms and reviews below and did I say you could subscribe and all I ask you to do is to say thank you Kate Play until your fingers bleed. Thank you.